Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from C1 and C2 Compounds. In the previous lecture, we started uh, discussions on production of different types of chemicals from the C1 compounds. What do you mean by C1 compounds or C2 compounds that we have already uh, seen? That taking the raw material whichever is having only one carbon atom then we can call them C, you know uh, uh, C1 compound like you know CO plus H2 mixture or CO alone and then doing the reaction with H2 then methane these are you know uh, C1 compounds and then from here we uh, try to produce uh, methanol right where uh, CO plus H2 reaction takes place to give the methanol and then we also have discussed like you know uh, production of formaldehyde from uh, uh, methanol. These uh, products like you know methanol as one product and then formaldehyde as another product that is what we have discussed in the previous lecture that is production of methanol and formaldehyde from C1 compounds we have seen. In this lecture we are going to uh, see a few more uh, chemicals from C1 compounds. Let us say methane we take and then do the chlorination to get the uh, chloromethane or methyl chloride plus HCl. This uh, CH3Cl again will react with the chlorine to give CH2Cl2 that is uh, methylene chloride and then this CH2Cl2 will react again with Cl2 to give CHCl3 which is chloroform plus HCl you get and this CHCl3 will again react with the uh, chlorine to give CCl4 carbon tetrachloride plus HCl that is what we are going to see in today's lecture that is production of a chloromethanes from the methane we are going to see. Now you can understand that these reactions are a series uh, initiated and then uh, propagated reactions they are forming in series that means when you take CH4 and Cl2 you cannot control to have only uh, methyl chloride or uh, chloroform or uh, carbon tetrachloride or methylene chloride uh, alone. All of them may be forming at uh, depending on what ratio of CH4 and Cl2 are you taking, right? So these are a serious reaction kind of thing and since uh, Cl2 is there, so these reactions are uh, highly exothermic and then if you do not control they can become even explosive reactions as well. So that is what uh, one topic that we are going to discuss, another topic is the Cl. Uh, chemicals from C2 compounds. Like C2 compounds what we have? We have a uh, C2H4 ethylene and then C2H2 ethylene. these compounds are there. So from here what compounds can we produce? Before producing uh, chemicals from C2 compounds, production of these C2 compounds like ethylene and ethylene that we discuss today and then we discuss uh, production of some components like ethyl alcohol ethylene oxide etc. these kind of products production that we are going to discuss, okay? So let us start with chloromethanes as explained just now these are kind of replacement reaction that is uh, one H atom of uh, methane is being replaced by one chlorine atom then you can get the methyl chloride. If two hydrogen atoms are replaced by the two chlorine atoms then methylene chlorides uh, would be forming if you replace three hydrogen atoms of uh, uh, methane with uh, three chlorine atoms then chloroform you get. If all four uh, hydrogen atoms of methane are being replaced by the uh, four chlorine atoms then you get the carbon tetrachloride. So in the chloromethane formation uh, process all uh, four types of uh, chloromethanes would be forming. This chloromethanes what we have? methyl chloride that is CH3Cl, methylene chloride CH2Cl2, chloroform CHCl3 and then carbon tetrachloride CCl4. Now we are going to discuss their properties. So methane is uh, in the gaseous form that we know. So this methyl chloride whatever you get that would be in the gaseous form whereas the rest all uh, three chloromethane should be in the liquid form, okay? So now we have a discussion on the pertinent properties in a kind of tabular form so that we can compare them easily. So uh, lower molecular weight hydrogen atom is being replaced by the higher molecular weight uh, chlorine atom that is the reason as you move from the methyl chloride to the methylene chloride followed by the chloroform and carbon tetrachloride 
your molecular weight of a chloromethanes is increasing, right. And then coming to the uh, melting point and boiling point of this component, those things are also increasing. Gradually they are increasing as you move from CH3Cl to uh, CH2Cl to CHCl3 and CCl4 because they are becoming from the gaseous form because methyl chloride is in gaseous form and then methylene chloride chloroform and then carbon tetrachloride are in the liquid form. So, uh, their uh, boiling point etc. gradually increasing okay? that is because the density of these compounds are increasing gradually from you know increased number of uh, uh, hydrogen atoms being replaced by the increased number of uh, or corresponding number of uh, chlorine atoms, right. Since methyl chloride is in gaseous form, its presence in the air is found to be explosive and then lower and upper limits of uh, these explosive limits are 8 and 20 volume percent respectively. Toxicity is 50 ppm for methyl chloride whereas for chloroform 100 ppm and carbon tetrachloride 25 ppm are the toxic limits. Solubility all of them are uh, soluble in water, alcohols and then acetones, chloroform, ether and then aromatics etc. Right? But uh, specifically if you see methyl chloride is soluble in all of them in the water, alcohol, acetone, chloroform, ether whereas the remaining 3 if you see uh, these uh, methylene chloride, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride are slightly soluble in water whereas completely miscible with alcohols and then ethers and then aromatics as well. Okay? So, this is about uh, pertinent properties of uh, 4 different types of uh, chloromethanes. Applications point of view, they are used as intermediate chemicals to produce some end products as well as uh, solvents also as di directly as solvents are also they are being used. So, these are the two types of uh, applications are possible for uh, chlorinated methanes directly can be used as solvents can be used as intermediate products. Let us say methyl chloride can be used for the methylation of uh, silicon to produce silicons like that anti knocking agents which are essential uh, in the uh, automobile industries. So, such anti knocking agents can also be produced by methyl chloride by doing methylation reactions. If you do the methylation reaction of cellulose then you can get the methyl cellulose etc. So, for this production point of view also this chlorinated methanes can be used as a intermediate products. Likewise, chloroform and carbon tetrachlorides are also used to produce uh, different types of uh, hydrocarbons having uh, fluorine and then chlorine or fluorinated or chlorinated hydrocarbons if you wanted to produce then this uh, CHCl3 and then CCl4 are also used. Coming to the methods of production, 3 processes are existing. The first one is direct thermal methane chlorination that is you just take methane and then chlorine uh, of appropriate mole ratio as per the product distribution that you wanted to have and then do the uh, thermal reaction. Just heat it at uh, 370 to 400 degrees centigrade depending on the product distribution. So, process is done you get the uh, you know chloromethanes that is uh, one uh, method uh, which is direct substitution process for making all 4 chlorinated derivatives. Products depends on mole ratio of CH4 to Cl2, what mole ratio are you taking these raw materials depending on that one, your product distribution that is what percentage of uh, methyl chloride, what percentage of methylene chloride, what percentage of uh, chloroform and then what percentage of uh, carbon tetrachloride that depends on this mole ratio as well as the reaction conditions like temperature. Usually 372 410 degree centigrade are maintained. Then methanol reacting with hydrochloric acid to give chloromethane or methyl chloride also that is one process. But it is competitive and it can be coupled with methane uh, chlorination process to use by product HCl because in the reactions we have seen every uh, one type of uh, chloromethane when forming one mole of a HCl is being formed. So, that means lot of HCl would be forming in the process no doubt. If that HCl you can utilize 
then these two process may be coupled ok, where because this HCl will can be reacting with the uh, methanol CH3OH to give CH3Cl plus H2O right. So, for this way also the coupling of two process can be done where utilization of excess of HCl whatever is formed in the methane chlorination form can be utilized. So, a kind of a utilization of byproduct or co-product is taking place by coupling of these two processes. Third process is uh, CCl4 production by the reaction between carbon disulfide and chlorine, but it is a older process and no more economic as well. So, we cannot go discussion about each and every process. So, what we do? We discuss the manufacturing of a chloromethanes by direct thermal methane chlorination reaction that is what we are going to see. So, what we do for this process? We start with the chemical reactions, quantitative requirements, plant capacities, flow chart and then process description followed by what are the major engineering problems as we have been doing for almost all processes. So, chemical reactions which I have already uh, written, so that is methane reacting with uh, chlorine to give 1 mole of uh, chloromethane or uh, methyl chloride plus HCl. This uh, methyl chloride will further react with Cl2 to give methylene chloride and then HCl and then this methylene chloride further react with the chlorine to give chloroform and then 1 mole of HCl and then this chloroform will further react with chlorine to give carbon tetrachloride and 1 mole of HCl. See now you can see how much of HCl is being formed, right. So, you should have a proper uh, market for it, okay. These reactions are highly exothermic and then these are uh, chain initiated and propagated reactions because of the uh, chloride radicals present. So, you cannot have a what is the delta H for overall reaction because the it depends on the mole ratio of a CH4 and Cl2 and then depends on the uh, product distribution that again depends on the reaction conditions as well. So, many factors are there because of that one having one single delta H for this series reaction is not possible. However, per mole of uh, methane uh, consumed that way if you see the exothermicity would be minus 24 kilo calories per mole of methane. Quantitative requirements obviously depends on mole ratio of methane to chlorine as I have been discussing, but let us say typical feed ratio of 1.8 if you take whatever the CH4 to Cl2 ratio if you take 1.8 then product ratio or product composition that you get is as follows, methyl chloride approximately 60 weight percent, methylene chloride approximately 28 weight percent, chloroform approximately 9 weight percent and carbon tetrachloride approximately 3 weight percent you can get. If you change this ratio, so these numbers would also be changing. Not only this ratio, but also temperature also plays a very important role on the formation of a you know these products and their yields. Yields you have to calculate based on one of the raw material. Let us say if you are calculating based on the Cl2 then 99 percent of chloromethanes you will get, but if you calculate based on the methane then 85 to 90 percent yield of chloromethanes would take place. Let us say for 1 ton of products as per this composition that means you are maintaining 1.8 uh, feed ratio. Then quantitative requirements of raw materials if you see chlorine 1.53 tons required, methane 0 0.305 tons or 385 normal cubic meters you may require. Plant capacity usually 30 to 120 tons per day, right. Now, we have a discussion on the flow chart of a process that is occurring in the industry to produce different types of a chloromethanes. So, what you do here that methane feed whatever is there that one and then chlorine you take to a reactor adiabatic reactor. Now, to this reactor the temperature conditions you maintain something like 370 to 410 degrees centigrade depending on your product distribution what percentage of 
methyl chloride, methylene chloride, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride are you expecting depending on that one temperature variation would be there. Right? So, since chlorine is there and then we already know this reaction is exothermic lot of heat would be evolved. Right? So, what happens? So, whatever the methane unreacted methane or uh, anything any products etc are there they would also be at high temperature. So, that preheated uh, feed whatever methane is there that can be recycled back to the reactor so that to save the energy or whatever the heat that is being evolved uh, because of this reaction that may be collected and then these uh, reactants may be preheated before sending it to the reactor. Okay? So, here this recycling of methane whatever is there that can be done with or without nitrogen inert right? because you know it is very essential to have N2 as we are going to see subsequently depending on the ratio between Cl2 to CH4 or CH4 to Cl2 the operating conditions you know the nature of the reaction would change right let us say cl2 to ch4 ratio if you consider if it is less than 2% so then it is suitable for the production of uh, required chemicals if you maintain it is between 2 to 5 or 8 or something like that then what happens you know uncontrolled uh, heat would be liberated if you maintain it more than uh, 6 then uh, detonation may take place, explosion may also take place in the reactor. So, uh, for that purpose in order to control them this nitrogen supply along with the methane or recycling of the methane along with the nitrogen is going to be uh, useful to control these reactants that is one way. Now, the ratio again like you know if you keep uh, 1.8 percent of uh, uh, you know CH4 to Cl2 ratio as we have seen in the previous slide then more uh, you know CH3 Cl approximately 69 percent or 60 percent you are getting that is too much and then whereas CCl4 you are getting approximately 4 percent or something like that as we just seen in the previous slide here 3 percent approximately 3 percent you get right. So, this uh, uh, distribution is uh, very important why because you have to see the final market, final market for CCl4 is very high. Right? So, if you have to increase Cl2 to get uh, more uh, CCl4, but if you increase more CCl4 then you know uh, explosions may take place. So, you have to design the reactor accordingly all those things we are going to discuss under major engineering problems anyway. So, the, that is the reason uh, the temperature, time and then CH4 to Cl2 ratio are going to be very crucial in the product distribution. Okay. So, after the reaction whatever the gases mixtures are there uh, the product mixtures are there they will be passed through an uh, heat exchanger right? and then sent to a absorber to collect 32 percent HCl. In the absorber what you are doing you are spraying water so that HCl whatever is there that would be absorbed and you get the 32 percent HCl. Let, so, now remaining what uh, remaining 68 percent is what it is nothing but H2O actually in this mixture. In if you want to recycle 32 percent HCl that is fine in this step is fine otherwise if you wanted to use uh, dry HCl then what you have to do you have to do uh, in azeotropic distillation or extractive distillation to get the dry HCl and then that dry HCl you can be you can recycle for the process. Okay? So, once this uh, traces uh, once this SCL is removed the product mixture is uh, scrubbed with NaOH solution in uh, neutralization section where you know uh, CO2 etc and then traces of SCL if at all still present they will be removed. This CO2 has to be removed by this neutralization step it is very important otherwise what happens it will be accumulating as inert gas within the reaction chamber or within the uh, process which is not good. Okay. After neutralization the mixture is uh, compressed and then uh, partially condensed and then sent to a multi component fractionator. Right? So, fractionator something like you know uh, distillation column right? you have different uh, trays like this. So, for one of the particular tray you will be sending the feed material and then uh, you maintain the temperature uh, pressure condition such a way that you know you have to keep keep in mind the boiling point 
right. So, now the methyl chloride is uh, highly volatile as per the boiling point data that we have seen in pertinent properties table. So, it will be collected as top product. Subsequently, underneath of this one uh, as side streams you can get methylene chloride, chloroform and then carbon tetrachloride as a you know side streams, right. If at all you know heavy materials still are present you know they will be collected from the bottom or water etc. still present they will be removed from the bottom, okay. This is the process, right. So, the uh, mixture if at all unreacted uh, CH4 etc. still is there. For example, methane or uh, Cl2 etc. which are not reacted still they are present in the uh, product mixture. So, then what you can do? You can uh, take them to a dry, drying tower where you will be drying with uh, 98 percent H2SO4 and then dry methane and then chlorine uh, or some of the products may also be recycled to the reactor. Some recycling of the product is also very essential not only methane and Cl2 recycling recycling of a product partially product some amount of CH3 Cl or CH2 Cl2 may be recycled because they are present they are formed in large quantities ok. So, that will also you can control the explosiveness of the reaction ok. So, these are some engineering techniques that are good in order to maintain the reaction under controlled conditions. Process description. Different cycles are required for complete thermal chlorination of natural gas. These cycles depend on desired product ratio and state of byproducts HCl required whether are you using 32, 32% uh, muriatic acid or as dry gases depending on that one you know different cycles are used. We have shown only one in the flow chart for the simplicity, ok. Methane to chlorine ratio is fixed as per the product ratio desired uh, for the consumer and chlorination done in adiabatic furnace. Exothermic heat evolved is recovered for preheating inlet gas to 280 degree centigrade. Temperature is maintained at 370 to 410 degree centigrade per selected cycle. HCl is recovered in a water spray absorption tower to get 30 to 32 percent aqueous HCl directly. If dry HCl is required then azeotropic mixture of HCl H2O is circulated in the tower. Then to stripper where dry HCl gas is top effluent whereas the bottom water being recirculated to the absorber. In order to remove HCl and CO2 chlorinated gases from absorber are scrubbed with caustic soda solution otherwise CO2 would accumulated as an inert gas in a recycle stream. Final steps to produce high purity products are compression and drying with H2SO4 is followed by condensation and rectification, right. Then you get the products as seen in the flow chart. Major engineering problems of this process if you list out, first is the reaction control. How are you going to control the reaction? By feed ratio, by you know chlorination process, temperature, what are those things? How are you going to control the reaction that is very much essential. Product ratio control is also very much essential because it, it should be based on the market. You produce more methyl chloride but the market is less for that one, so the process is not going to be good for you, ok. Then we see that lot of HCl is being formed, right. So, uh, when each of uh, CH3, Cl, CH2, uh, Cl2, CH, Cl3 and CCl4 they are formed only 1, 1 mole, right, uh, for 1 mole of uh, methane and then uh, 5 moles of uh, Cl2. How many moles? 4 moles of uh, HCl you are getting, so much of HCl you are getting, so that much HCl you know you should able to utilize otherwise it is not going to be economical, process is not going to be economical. So, it is such a good process here not only you are getting the chlorinated uh, methanes, but also you are getting lot of HCl which you can get a good market for it. Now, we discuss the engineering problems under each of three categories. The first category is the reaction control uh, uh, engineering problem. Chlorination of methanes is highly exothermic reaction. It is a chain initiated and propagated one involving 
chloride radical so it is going to be highly exothermic and dangerous if it is not properly controlled. Therefore, if not controlled properly it can be explosive as well. From safety viewpoint following picture provide reaction rate conditions as function of mole ratio of Cl2 to CH4 without diluent present the picture is given here. Let us say mole ratio of Cl2 to CH4 if you maintain between 0 to uh, 2 then process operating conditions that is under process operating conditions is good. If you go towards more uh, uh, value of this value then you know more of the methane is there because this ratio is that is for the Cl2 to CH4. If more methane is there then more of the CCl4 CHCl3 may be forming. Okay, and then market is for that one only. If you go for the smaller values of Cl2 to CH4 ratio, then more of the methyl chloride and methylene chloride would be forming. You will be having less market for that. But if you go this ratio beyond 2 and then up to 5, then what happen? You know burning or uncontrolled heat liberation takes place in the process. So, that is going to be very dangerous. But if you go further higher like you know uh, 5 to 14 then detonation conditions would be there and then explosion may take place. Okay? So, you have to operate within the first regime of Cl2 to CH4 ratio of uh, 0 to 2. Okay? Methods which can be used further control the uh, reaction in region where Cl2 to CH4 ratio is between 0 to 2. So, what are the utilization of methane cycle where there is considerable excess of methane is there so then more methane you can utilize. It provides largely mono and dichloromethane products that is methyl chloride and methylene chloride products you can get. But on the other hand it increases methane recycle and difficulty of product separation as well. Other option is that utilization of diluent gas such as nitrogen or uh, product recycle. Some portion of the product you can recycle after drying with H2SO4 as well as you can have the nitrogen also along with the methane recycle. Other option is that utilization of liquid co-solvent if at all uh, suitable to control the reaction. The solvent should be chosen such a way. Okay? Addition of chlorine stage wise along the reactor. Chlorine exothermic so rather mixing or providing uh, high velocity uh, chlorine or high flow rate chlorine to the reactor it would be better to allow it to the reactor slowly drop by drop or even very small flow rates okay? so that the reaction can be controlled. Then one more option is that design reactor for high velocity isothermal operations. It is relatively uh, expensive method. Thus finally, close control of temperature along with associated highly exothermic reaction is necessary to obtain good yields. However, too high temperature will give cracking of CH4 for the, with the formation of carbon black which is also highly undesirable in the products. Okay? So, you cannot go high temperature as well otherwise then this uh, coke formation or free carbon formation takes place. Now coming to the uh, major engineering problems associated with the product ratio control, different methods are available. Utilization of methane cycle is the easiest to design and operate, however it gives methyl chloride in large quantities, whereas predominant demand is for CCl4. Therefore, CH4 to Cl2 ratio of between 0.5 to 0.8 with nitrogen diluent and operation with recycle should be conducted so that you know more of the carbon tetrachloride and chloroform forms rather methyl chloride and methylene chlorides. For this one large furnace or a separate set of furnaces are required. Other possibility is to strip out a light chlorinated product that is uh, methyl chloride or methylene chloride from the methane cycle and add excess chlorine to produce chloroform and then carbon tetrachloride. Excess of chlorine will give you carbon tetrachloride or chloroform formation. This also requires additional equipment. Third category of major engineering problem for this uh, direct chlorination of methane process is utilization of HCl to produce 
chloromethane or methyl chloride. So, how it is possible? Methanol, if you react with HCl, then you will get this one, right? So, in this presence of alumina or similar catalyst, this reaction can be carried out in a vapor phase reaction or otherwise if you use zinc chloride or aluminum chloride catalyst, then you can do this reaction in the liquid phase as well. This process is also used in plants when methanol and byproduct HCl are available, okay? Choice of processes when different processes are available, so then you have to select a process which is going to be more economical and safe for you to handle. The best choice for a completely chlorinated set of products is methane chlorination process which we just discussed. High CCL4 production contribution via CS2 is due to older plants completely amortized which can still compete. HCl and methanol process for CH3Cl still controls unless economical natural gas and chlorine are available, but only when this should be coupled with good market for CCL4 co-product and by-product HCl. So, that is all about a chlorinated uh, methanes or chloromethanes production. With this we complete a uh, production of uh, chemicals from C1 compounds like CO plus H2 and CH4 we have utilized and different types of chemicals we produce like methanol, formaldehyde and chloromethanes. In fact, in the previous lecture we have seen a slide where variety number of products can be produced. We cannot go into all such kind of productions of intermediate and then end products from C1 compounds. Selectively we have discussed a few. Now we are going to discuss chemicals from C2 compounds, right? So that is from ethylene and ethylene what kind of chemicals can be produced, that is what we are going to discuss. However, before producing chemicals from this ethylene and acetylene, we will be having a few basics about this ethylene and acetylene and their production, okay? So, let us have a, a brief introduction about olefins because ethylene is one type of olefin. Olefins or diolefins are manufactured by catalytic cracking of various hydrocarbons in large scales in general. Most important olefin is ethylene based on the product distribution, you know, ethylene is the one which is mostly used to produce different types of intermediates and end products. We are going to see uh, a diagram depicting all such kind of products as well. And then this ethylene is produced at a rate of 12.7 multiplied by 10 power 9 kg per year. In the manufacturing of uh, ethylene, byproduct propylene is also found that is also we are going to see in the flow chart. It is produced at a rate of uh, 5.9 multiplied by 10 power 9 kg per year, almost half of the quantity that much you know uh, propylene is produced. Whatever the ethylene quantity is produced, at least 50 percent of that much quantity propylene is also produced in the same process, okay? That is what we are going to see in the flow chart as well. These are made by steam cracking at high temperatures 700 to 800 or even higher degree centigrades, but with short residence time. Some of the process are occurring in fraction of seconds, some of them are occurring in few seconds like 5 seconds, 10 seconds or something like that. These timings also, temperature conditions also we have seen in one of the previous lectures. Uh, in fact, in the previous chapter where we were discussing about the petroleum refinery industries. Separation of products done by quenching followed by compression to 3.5 megapascal because different products are forming, you have to separate, then only you can properly utilize them to produce different types of intermediates and then end products. In the catalytic cracking process, ethylene, propylene, butadiene, aromatics are also found in the product. Low molecular weight hydrocarbons such as natural gases are used as preferred feed stock for the production of alkenes which is uh, good. However, increasing amounts are being made from the heavy hydrocarbons also, all those things we are going to discuss. So, now chemicals from C2 compounds, what are the C2 compounds we are considering in this particular lecture? Ethylene and acetylene we are going to consider, but however, making different types of chemicals from these ethylene and then acetylene, what we are going to do? We are going to see how to produce them as uh, you know products. Then we use them as raw material and then produce different types of intermediates and then end products. 
sources of ethylene and acetylene are provided here. Let us say ethylene can be obtained from the fermentation alcohol, from the refinery of gases, hydrocarbon steam cracking process as well can be used. Acetylene can be obtained from calcium carbide process, partial oxidation of petroleum fractions and hydrocarbon steam cracking process as well. So, we cannot discuss all of them. So, what we discuss we take a process which is common where you get both of these products ethylene and then acetylene right. So, hydrocarbon steam cracking we are going to discuss. Before discussing uh, process we have a you know pertinent properties of these materials. Molecular weight is 28.3 for the ethylene and then 26.02 for the acetylene. Melting point and then boiling points are higher for the acetylene and lower for the ethylene. Same is true for the triple point as well. Okay. Density also ethylene is uh, having lower density compared to the acetylene. Solubility ethylene is slightly soluble in water, but acetylene does not soluble in water, it, it does not dissolve in water. Since both of them are in gases form, they can be explosive also. Lower limits and upper limits of uh, these components are provided here. For example, ethylene 3 volume percent in air and then 29 volume percent in air are lower and upper limits. Whereas, if you have pure oxygen then 2.9 volume percent and 79 volume percent respectively are lower and upper limits. For the acetylene in air 2.3 volume percent and then 80 volume percent are lower and upper limits respectively. Now, we see ethylene consumption pattern. What does it mean by how many different ways ethylene can be utilized? First we produce the ethylene, why are we concentrating more on the production of ethylene because it is having so much of consumption pattern. It may be utilized to produce different types of intermediates and end products as shown here. Let us say if you use ethylene as a raw material or primary chemical then you can get intermediates like ethanol, ethylene oxide, ethyl chloride, ethylene dichlorides and then end product like a polyethylene again intermediates like styrenes you can get. Right? So, today's lecture we are going to discuss production of ethylene. In the in uh, end of the today's lecture we are going to discuss the production of ethanol as well, but in the next class we will be discussing about ethylene oxide and then other types of uh, uh, intermediates produced from the ethylene. Okay? So, let us say this ethanol can be further utilized to produce acetaldehyde, acetic acid, denatured alcohol, esters, solvents for different purpose it is used, not only to produce some chemicals, but also you know some end chemicals also like this. Okay? So, like this uh, you know this acetic acid may be further utilized to produce vinyl estate which we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Right? Estaldehyde may be used for the production of uh, chloral and then cellulose estate etc. Ethylene oxide is a very good intermediate for the production of different types of products like you know acrylonitriles, glycols, polyethers, polyurethanes or uh, foams and then ethanol amines which we are going to discuss uh, how is being produced in the next class. Right? Ethyl chloride can be used as a gasoline as well. Okay? Like that you know different uh, intermediates or different products can be produced. Styrene can be used to produce different types of uh, uh, rubbers, S type uh, rubber, S type uh, latex, reverse ratio rubber, polystyrene etc. These many end products can be produced. See now using the ethylene you can produce so many. Only a few are, uh, are represented here again some of them are again further utilized to produce uh, more chemicals. Right? So, that is the reason out of the olefins ethylene is the most important one because it is utilized for uh, production of huge number of chemicals either directly or as a basis to get some intermediates and then from those intermediates again getting more chemicals all you know wide spectrum of product is possible uh, when the ethylene is the uh, base or primary material. Possible methods of production there are uh, different methods are there that depends on the 
source of hydrocarbons and how the cracking or pyrolysis has been done, right? And then product obviously it will be having both ethylene and then ethylene as well. One of the famous process is steam pyrolysis or cracking of petroleum from LPG and naphtha feedback. You can use LPG as well as the naphtha as feedstock to produce ethylene and then ethylene depending on your resources of raw materials. But the process is same which is steam pyrolysis or steam cracking. Another process is thermal pyrolysis of ethane and or propane, but it is not flexible. We are going to discuss that one anyway. The dehydration of ethanol, it is used in India, but it is not competitive for the uh, large scale requirement in the long term, right. So, these are good, this process is good for the uh, small. Uh, scale as well as uh, uh, for the short time requirements. If you want to fulfill all your long term requirement, this process is not suitable. However, we are going to discuss only one method here again that is this process using LPG or naphtha as feedstock and doing the steam cracking to get the required ethylene and ethylene. So, that we are going to discuss now. Chemical reaction if you see, let us say, uh, whatever the LPG or naphtha that you take, the generalized formula if it is represented as Cx H2x plus 2, then you use the steam at high temperature 700 to 800 degree centigrade and do the cracking. O2 may be used as optional, it may not be compulsory everywhere. Then you get 4 to 15 percent of uh, ethylene and then 7 to 13 percent of ethylene. So, in addition to ethylene and then ethylene, you also get ethane, propane, propylene, butane, butylene, etc. This kind of products then H2, CO, CO2, CH4, C4H6, uh, some free carbon and then heavy oil fractions etc. also forming. Okay, so, that means there is also possibility of solid products, solids formation in the product and there is also possibility of heavy oils formation in the steam cracking process. Okay. Quantitative requirements for 1 ton of ethylene, usually the numbers are not available, but Indian plants mostly they use naphtha as raw material. Co-products, ethylene, propylene, butylene, butadiene, aromatic such as benzene, toluene, xylene, heavy oil residues, etc. you will be getting as co-products as shown in the reaction. Okay? So, the temperature and then reaction time are going to be very important in order to control the product distribution. Okay? Plant capacity is usually 100 to 600 tons per day. Now, we have a flow chart for the production of a ethylene. So, now in this uh, flow chart what you can see you have a pyrolysis furnace. Let us say if you have naphtha as a feedstock then you take it to the pyrolysis reactor from the bottom and then from the top you supply the steam. Now, in this reactor you had to maintain temperature 700 to 800 degrees centigrade. So, for that purpose fuel is also being utilized. Whatever the excess steam is there that can be collected. Now, here from this product mixture, products, co-products, etc. would be there. So, they would be also at high temperature more than 700 degrees centigrade. So, what you do? You have to reduce the temperature so that separate separation uh, can be done uh, subsequently as uh, shown here in the flow chart. So, for that purpose you pass through uh, waste uh, steam heat boiler where you recover the heat as uh, in the form of steam. After uh, reducing the temperature by collecting the energy in the form of steam, what you do? You take the mixture to scrubber where you scrub with the oil so that to remove you know solids and then heavy fractions like uh, heavy oils etc. would be recovered in the waste oil. Okay? After removing the solids and then heavy fractions, that would be taken to the subsequent step. Let us say if your uh, feed is ethane, propylene, 
propane and then butane these are saturated. So, then they can also be taken to the pyrolysis furnace separately. Why separately? Because here the temperature and then time of the reaction are very much different compared to this one. That is the reason separately they are handling, they are being handled if you have both the feeds. Okay? So, excess steam is collected, fuel is supplied from the bottom to in order to get the required energy for the reaction to take place. After the reaction, the reaction mixture is uh, passed through uh, waste heat steam boiler to recover the uh, steam from the product mixtures and then after that they will be scrubbed with the oils to remove the solids and then heavy fractions as a bottoms. After removing them, the gases mixture or products mixture whatever is there that is taken to the compressor. To this compressor actually along with this uh, product mixture uh, refinery of gases may also be taken because the compressor is designed such a way so that even the refinery of gases also can be taken. Here the uh, compression is done to 35 mega Pascals. Okay? Then after that the mixture would be taken to flash vaporizer, this is the flash vaporizer. Here what you do, you remove like H2CO and then methane etc, methane, H2CO etc that you remove, okay, right, as the top and then whatever the bottoms are there, there would be uh, something like C3, C4 compounds would be there, they would be again scrubbed with NaOH separately here, okay. And then after uh, separating whatever the top products or gases etc are there, they will be C2, uh, C3 components, they will be taken to another washer at the top. Okay? So, here uh, pre-fractionator is there in order to, you know, these C3, C4, they would be having both uh, propane, propylene, butane, butylene etc. So, then what you do usually pre-fractionation you do and then separate out uh, whatever the sub you know C3 components etc are there and then remaining one you can take it to the wash. So, after this uh, flash vaporization when you separate out the methane H2CO etc then the remaining mixture whatever is there that you take to a washer where scrubbing with NaOH solution is done to remove the CO2 etc these kind of components. Then whatever the gas is there that would be dried using the alumina, silica beds, etc. After this, primarily you will be having C1 to C3 chemicals. So, here C1 chemicals are nothing but the methane, etc. They will be removed in a demethanizer and then collected along with the CO and H2 as tail gases from the top. Then after removing the methane, whatever the ethane and uh, C2, C3 chemicals are there, those will be taken to uh, deethanizer where ethane would be separated out. So, that you take it to the C2 splitter because in the ethane uh, mixture you do not have only ethane, you will be having ethylene also. So, that ethylene you collect, ethylene also may be there, so they will be taken back. Whereas, the ethane after separating out that can be taken as a recycle, this ethane can be taken to the reactor as a recycle. Right? Whereas, after deethanizer whatever the mixture is there, that mixture is primarily having C3 components like propane, propylene, uh, etc. This kind of components would be there, some, some amount of uh, uh, butane, uh, butylene, etc. may also be there. So, that mixture would be taken to debutanizer to remove the butanes. After removing the butane, mixture is taken to the depropanizer to remove the propanes. So, those uh, products, let us say here butane whatever you remove that you take to the rerun tower because in this one you may also having the along with the uh, you know after the butanes you are getting from the top, from the bottom you are uh, whatever the heavy fractions are there, aromatics, heavy fuels etc. Et would be there. So, they, those things you can take to rerun tower to separate aromatics and then fuel oil as the top and bottom products. After the depropanizer, so propanes whatever are there you take from the top and then heavier fractions whatever are there, uh, they will be collected from the bottom and then sent to the absorber where if at all butane, butylene, etc. are there, they will be absorbed and separated out as a two different products like butylene, etc. Right? 
So, then after this debutanizer and depropanizer the mixture whatever is there primarily uh, C3 mixture would be there where propylene you separate it as a product as a top product whereas the bottom one was, would be nothing but the you know propane. This propane which is nothing but C3 saturate that can be uh, recycled back to the reactor. Okay. Now, this is now here what you got? You got propylene, aromatics, butadiene as products. Okay. Whereas, after this uh, C2 splitter where you separated out the ethane, from the top primarily you will be having C2H4, C2H2, ethylene and ethylene would be there. So, that you take uh, to a acetylene reactor where you separate out the acetylene and uh, in a stripper using an extracting solvent. Okay. Then remaining of the mixture whatever is there that would be primarily ethylene that ethylene would be taken to ethylene uh, topping steel and then tailing steel depending on its content how much ethylene is present and then it is collected as product from the top. Okay. Let us say you do not want any ethylene as a product then what you do this mixture what of uh, C2H4 and C2H2 whatever is there that you take to acetylene converter where you react with hydrogen to convert that acetylene also into the ethylene and then you do the ethylene concentrating by this ethylene topping stills and then ethylene tailing stills and then get the ethylene only as the product. This step you do if you need only ethylene you do not want ethylene okay then only is this step should be done okay this is the flow chart now you can see either you use naphtha or you use uh, the c3 c4 uh, c2 saturates as a feedstock so many products not only ethylene you are getting you are getting ethylene butadiene aromatics fuel oil propylene so many products you are getting so propylene also you are getting this is c3 chemical okay process description it is a high temperature thermal reforming process feed for this process is ethane propane butane or liquid naphtha as well so depending on the feed your temperature uh, and then reaction time are going to change that's the reason depending on the feed for this feed you have separate furnace and then for this feed you have separate furnace superheated steam is mixed with hydrocarbon and fed through heated coils of a pyrolysis furnace because of residence time temperature conditions requirement which are uh, different for both of the types of raw materials you know C2 to C4 feed is pyrolyzed in a separate furnace. Pyrolyzed gases are quenched in a waste heat steam boiler then are scrubbed with gas oil to remove solids and then heavy hydrocarbons then sent to compressors to increase pressure to 35 atmosphere. Compression station may also handle refinery of gases which can be separated in the same system. Then flash vaporization removes C1 to C3 fractions which are caustic scrub to remove CO2, dried with activated alumina and then separated into ethylene and ethylene by a combination of absorption, extraction and fractionation steps as shown in the flow chart. Ethane is recycled for pyrolysis again whereas CH4, CO and H2 can be uh, utilized as synthesis gas or used as a fuel because these things are you are getting as a top from the demethanizer column. As detailed in the flow chart, liquid fraction from flash chamber that is C3 and then higher is split by fractionation into a number of uh, products. Extractive distillation is required to separate butane, butylene and butadiene because of close boiling point range of three components under pressure. We have shown them in the flow chart. Coming to the major engineering problems or modifications that may be possible for the process are uh, uh, listed here. Three types are there. First one is the choice of process, second one is the steam economy, third one is the product ratio control. We have seen that the product is having so many 
uh, co-products. So then how to control the product ratio that is also one important thing that should be based on your market for a given product or co-product. Under the choice of process, numerous modifications are possible like you know what first is the feed then how are you doing the you know uh, so called uh, pyrolysis is or cracking whether it is catalytic, non catalytic whether are you using only steam or you are using oxygen also for partial combustion like different uh, modifications are possible that we are going to discuss in the next slide. Steam economy for any process is very much essential to make self sufficient as well as to make a economic process or economic plant. Product ratio control it depends on the steam hydrocarbon mole ratio. What ratio of steam to hydrocarbons are you uh, selecting? It is one of the important parameter which is going to define your uh, product distribution. In addition to that one residence time is also an essential one. So, under choice of process numerous process modifications possible in pyrolysis of hydrocarbons and these can be based on feed type is one thing, then choice of pyrolysis agent, then choice of pyrolysis equipment. So, under the feed type you can have CH4 uh, or the natural gas as the feed, but it will give only ethylene along with the synthesis gas. But if you use C2 and C3 uh, feed that is ethane and propane feed, then you can get in addition to this uh, synthesis gas and ethylene you will also get ethylene. If you use C4 or higher feed like naphtha etc., that gives spectrum of products as detailed in the flowchart, but mainly control for production of these two. Why to control these two products only? Because we have seen if you have ethylene, so many number of other chemicals you can produce. Same is similar way. Next to the ethylene, ethylene is the most important intermediate which can be used a uh, wide variety of products. Because of that one, you have to uh, select these ratios, feed, etc., such a way that more ethylene followed by the ethylene are forming in the product. Under the choice of pyrolysis agent of uh, process modifications as discussed n number of uh, possibilities are there. Let us say if you use only heat that is non catalytic pyrolysis you are doing which is the original process and but no longer attract you because it gives uh, uh, more gases as well as the more free carbon which is not good from the economics point of view. Then heat and then catalyst which is known as the catalytic uh, pyrolysis used in dehydrogenation of butylene to butadiene that is one process. Then you can have the heat plus steam uh, which is known as the thermal reforming or steam reforming. We are not using any catalyst here so it is a non-catalytic process. It is also known as the steam cracking. Then in addition to the heat and steam if you also have the catalyst then that is known as the catalytic uh, reforming and it is used for synthesis gas preparation in general. Then oxygen you are using but without any catalyst then partial combustion will also take place because of the presence of oxygen. So then it known as the partial combustion process. It is also used for synthesis gas and ethylene production. Now oxygen plus steam but without catalytic then we call it modified partial combustion because only uh, partial combustion is not taking place. Steam is there so some pyrolysis would also be taking place so that is the reason it is known as the modified partial combustion to give higher yields of uh, C2 fractions like uh, ethylene and then ethylene. It is also called as steam cracking. Right? So this steam cracking uh, can be catalytic also if you are using uh, catalyst along with the oxygen and steam which is of often uh, used for the oxy dehydrogenation for butadiene. Coming to the process modification under choice of pyrolysis equipment category, tubular indirect fired equipment are uh, used uh, for catalytic reactions, coiled pipe furnaces are used for non-catalytic reactions in the absence of oxygen. And then combustion type burner are used for reaction where oxygen is introduced. So depending on type of uh, process are you doing you have to select the reactor also. Design of equipment must provide balance between temperature, 
contact time and then quench time is also because the temperature usually high 700 to 800 degree centigrade. So, product mixture whatever is coming or uh, product gases mixture whatever is coming that has to be properly cooled to required temperature so that separation can be done easily. Otherwise, uh, free carbon formation may take place even after the reaction as well. This is essential for optimum cracking to correct product ratio and yield without carbon formation. Now, under uh, steam economy category of uh, major engineering problems, heat added to pyrolysis section can be recovered in part by incorporating stake and then quench boiler heat transfer surface. Quench boiler recovering heat that would otherwise be wasted in water or oil quenching. Resulting high pressure steam makes plant completely self sufficient for process and heating steam needs. Coming to the product ratio control category of uh, engineering problems, product composition is controlled by steam to hydrocarbon mole ratio and then residence time. So, as per your product you have to select these ratios. Ethylene to ethylene rates can be varied between 0.3 to 2. If you want more ethylene, so then ratio has to be towards the lower end. Okay? If no ethylene is desired, then light gases split at the C2 level and ethylene is mildly hydrogenated to ethylene as we discussed in the flow chart. So, that is all about the production of a C2 chemicals. C2 compounds production we have seen that is production of ethylene and ethylene from the hydrocarbons naphtha as well as uh, C2, C3, C4 uh, saturates as a uh, feed material that is what we have seen. Now, we have C2 chemicals like ethylene and ethylene production. So, once we have these things, how we can use them to produce different types of intermediates or end products that is what we are going to discuss. But however, in this lecture we are going to discuss about production of ethanol only, remaining ones we will be discussing in the next lecture. Ethanol. It can be obtained by the hydration of ethylene over a phosphoric acid on silide catalyst. Okay? So, since we are producing this ethanol by this synthetic process, so this is known as a synthetic ethanol. But only 18 percent of overall ethanol that is being produced industrially is synthetic ethanol. Rest all uh, remaining uh, 82 percent is by fermentation process. Okay? Predominant methods of uh, ethanol manufacturing was by fermentation of sugars and this method went out of use by 1930s. However, still fermentation is used to produce ethanol, but not from the uh, molasses fermentation, but fermentation of uh, corn. Corn fermentation is now a source of 82 percent of all ethanol is being produced. It is used as gasol which is nothing but mixture of 90 percent gasoline and 10 percent ethanol and used for the automobile fuels. Industrial uses for ethanol are shared by synthetic and fermentation alcohol in 7 to 3 ratio. This includes application as solvents approximately 60 percent and then chemical intermediates approximately 40 percent. Okay. So, uh, this ethanol production synthetically it is simple process you can do the hydration of ethylene using phosphoric acid on silide catalyst then you can get the synthetic alcohol. right? But uh, fermentation process we have already discussed how to produce uh, different types of uh, chemicals from the fermentation where we have also discussed the production of ethanol. So, we are not going to repeat it here again. References for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.